Okay, this is exam 3 for physics 202. Uh, number 1, it says a convex lens, that's this kind of lens, has a focal length of 20 centimeters, here's the focal points, and the object is located 10 centimeters to the left of the lens. With that kind of arrangement, you're going to get a virtual image. It's going to be upright, and it's going to be bigger, and a virtual image is always on the same side as the object with a single lens system. So let's see, uh, virtual upright to the right, that doesn't work, doesn't work must be D, virtual upright and to the left of the lens. This figure shows a mirror along with the object and the image from the, that the mirror forms. What kind of mirror produced this? Well, concave only produces a virtual image. Likewise, flat only produces, or excuse me, uh, convex only produces a virtual, and flat only produces a virtual, so it must be concave. So it's this kind of a situation where you have the object here and then the image is there. All right. Uh, what is the magnification of a flat mirror? It's 1. You're the same size and you're upright, so it's positive 1. Uh, also, m is minus q over p, and q is equal to negative p, so, uh, so that gives you a positive 1 magnification. Most cameras have an aperture to block the outer edges of the lens. What's the purpose? That's to reduce spherical aberration, to reduce those marginal rays that come in. Uh, which of these physical phenomena are the cause of a mirage? That is refraction. All right, it looks like a reflection, but really it's the refraction of light through the heated air that, that comes up from the ground. Consider these two ways. What type of interference when they combine? Well, you're adding peaks to trough, so that's destructive interference. That is B. Uh, previous figure, by what amount are the two ways out of phase? Well, for destructive interference of these, they have to be uh, a half a wavelength. So number seven is A. It could also be three halves wavelength, five halves wavelength, seven halves, but those weren't options. LIGO is an observatory that is based on which of these devices? LIGO is the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Observatory. It's basically a, uh, a big Michelson interferometer. In a double slit experiment, when the wavelength of the light is increased, the interference pattern does what? D sine theta equals M uh, lambda, if lambda goes up, theta goes up. So uh, the interference pattern spreads out. Theta increases, so number 9 is D. Single slit experiment, what path difference uh, from each slit traveled to give a, this should be maximum actually, as it's drawn on the figure. This is uh, 1 lambda, that's D, number 10. I right, consider the superposition of these two waves with these two parts cancel. These two parts add up. This cancels with this, and this cancels with this, but these two add up, these two sections. So we're left with two big humps in the wave. Uh, that's A for number 11. Mass on a spring is pulled to x equal A and released. After a time of one period, what distance has the mass traveled? All right, it travels up A, down A, down A again, and up back A. So that is 4A. Uh, which is C. Consider this representation of simple harmonic motion. Uh, the velocity, the slope here is negative. Uh, the excel the uh, velocity is dec is increasing, so your acceleration is also negative. So velocity and acceleration are negative. That is A, 13. I said in class that these two are not options. Consider these plots of displacement. How do their frequencies compare? Okay, well, uh, this frequency is bigger, so the frequency of B is bigger than the frequency of A. Oh, let's see, it's written the opposite way. So the frequency of object A is smaller than the frequency of object B. So number 14 is B. Following figure shows a Michelson interferometer. Uh, what is the smallest distance that you can move this mirror in order to see a shift of one fringe. That is where there was a dark fringe, there is now a bright fringe. In order to have that, you need a path length difference of a half of a wavelength. To make a, a bright fringe into a dark fringe, that's a path length difference of a half a wavelength. So that means that this distance, which is traveled twice, has to be a quarter wavelength. So the answer is A. All right, how far from a 1.2 meter focal length lens or convex mirror, rather, you place an object in order to get an upright image half the size of the object. So our magnification is plus one half. Our focal length is negative 1.2. And we want to know uh, 
what is P and what is Q for a parts A and B. We have two equations, 1 over F equals 1 over Q plus 1 over P, and also M is minus Q over P. Two equations, two unknowns. We can do simple substitution to uh, calculate this. So we say Q is equal to minus MP, and we're going to plug this in right here. So I get 1 over F equals 1 over negative MP plus 1 over P. I can factor out a 1 over P, 1 minus 1 over M, and then if I solve this for P, multiply both sides by P, multiply both sides by F, I get P is equal to F times 1 minus 1 over M. Let's see, that is... Uh, 1.2, positive 1.2. So P is positive 1.2 meters. And then I also want to find Q. Well, look, I can just plug this in here. It's negative 1 half times P, which is 1.2. So it's negative 0 0.6 meters. So those are the answers, uh, and that's all. Consider this optical system with the magnification of the final image. Is the image real or virtual? Is it inver upright or inverted? All right. This is P1. This is F1. I want to find Q1. That is the image distance for the first image. That is the image created by the first lens. That's 1 over F1 minus 1 over P1 to the negative 1. That's 1 over 10 minus 1 over 20 to the negative 1. That's 2 over 20 minus 1 over 20. It's 1 over 20, so that's equal to 20 centimeters. All right, M1 then is uh, negative Q1 over P1, which is negative, tw negative 20 over 20, which is negative 1. Do the same thing for the second lens, although now my image, my first image is right there, and this distance is uh, 20 minus 15, so it's 5 centimeters, but it's on the right side of the lens, which is opposite the side from where the rays are coming from, or opposite the side from the way the original object was. So that image, that object distance, rather, is negative, negative 5 centimeters. And then I do a similar thing. Q2 is uh, 1 over F2 minus 1 over Q2 to the negative 1. That's 1 over 20 minus a 1 over negative 5, which is plus 1 over 5, to the negative 1. That's equal to 20 over 5, which is equal to 4. So M2 is negative Q over P. That's negative 4 over negative 5, which is 4 fifths, which is 0 0.8. Now my total magnification then is equal to M1, M2. A lot of you added the two values for the magnification. That's not correct. You take the product. It's negative 1 times 4 fifths, which is 4 fifths. So the magnification is negative 4 fifths. All right. The final image distance right here is positive, so it's a real image. And the magnification is negative, so it's inverted. Green light at 5, 10 nanometers. Writing it SI units is diffracted by grading with 5,000 lines per centimeter. So D is equal to 1 over 5,000. That's in centimeters, which is uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 4 centimeters, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Uh, on a screen 12 meters away, that's L, is 12 meters. What is the distance between the central fringe and the third bright fringe? So I'm looking for the third order, m equal 3. Uh, I don't know what theta is, and I want to know what y is. All right, just say d sine theta equals m lambda. This is for a diffraction grading, which is the same as for a double slit. So this is towards the bright spots, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, I solves first for theta.
the inverse sine of 3 times 510 times 10 to the minus 9. Divided by d, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 6. And that angle is equal to 49.9. And then I want to know why uh, this is my triangle, this is the distance L, this is the distance Y, this is my angle theta. So Y is just equal to L tan theta. Based on my trigonometry, that's 12 meters times the tangent of that angle, which is equal to uh, 14 meters. So that's the uh, first answer for part A. In part B, you're supposed to figure out the number of orders. All right, that is when theta is equal to 90, what is M? So D sine theta, the sine of 90 is just 1, is equal to M times lambda. So M is equal to D over lambda. I wanted to see this calculation for the maximum number of orders. And then I find that's uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters over 510 times 10 to the minus 9 meters that's equal to 3.92 that means that I get three orders on every on each side so here's my bright fringe I was looking for something like that a total of seven bright spots right expression for the position of a simple harmonic motion for these these uh, criteria, M is equal to 1.3 kilograms. The spring constant K is 1,200 newtons per meter. The Vmax is 1.5 meters per second at, whoop, sorry, at T equal 2 seconds. All right, so. Uh, I want to um, determine all the values. My solution for the Hooke's law for the differential equation that we showed in class is this, that x of t is equal to a cosine of omega t plus phi. And I want to determine what these values are. What is a? What is omega? What is phi? All right. First, I need to find the angular frequency, omega is equal to the square root of k over m. We're going to use this for a couple of different purposes. This is the square root of 1200 newtons per meter over the m. The mass, 1.3 kilograms, gives me 30.4 radians per second. Then, I know that if I take the derivative of that position function, I can find my v max, which is equal to a omega, the magnitude of it. And so I can solve then for a, since I know v max. equal to 1.5 over 30.4. That's equal to 0 0.049 meters. So that's my A value. I've already found that. I've already found omega. Now all I need to do is find phi and then calculate the period. So it tells me that at t equal 2, I have my maximum velocity. So uh, that means if I were to plot my, my uh, sine graph at this time, which is t equal 2, my velocity versus time is going to look like this. All right, because at this time, it's maximum velocity. So I know that at t equal 2 seconds, that omega t plus phi is going to equal pi over 2 because the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1 and I, in order for this to be maximum that uh, omega t plus phi has to equal 1 so I know omega and I know phi and I know t or rather I know omega and t omega is 30.4 times t which is 2 plus phi is equal to pi over 2 so if I solve for phi, I get phi is equal to uh, negative 59.2.
and so that's my phi value. So my final function is uh, 0.049, the cosine of 30.4 t plus a negative 59.2. That's the answer. You also have to find the period. The period is 1 over the frequency. Uh, we also know that omega is equal to 2 pi f. It's the angular frequency and the frequency are related in that way. So my frequency is omega over 2 pi, so I can plug that in over here, and I get a 2 pi over omega, which is 2 pi over 30.4, which gives my period of 0.21 seconds. There are the multiple choice answers.